another video from Fast Tech. In this one, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to disassemble and reassemble a PlayStation 5. There's been tons of videos on YouTube that show you how to disassemble one of these, but there's not a single one that shows you how to reassemble it once it's been disassembled. So that's another exclusive, another first from Fast Tech. This video is brought to you by the Fast Tech Pro Auto Kit, which is a toolkit that disassembles not only your PS5, but your Xbox Series X, older Xbox systems, older PlayStation systems, MacBooks, iPhones, iPads, you name it. Links in the description box and you can use the coupon code YouTube for a discount. And before we start guys, I can't emphasize enough how much I appreciate you guys watching our videos, but please go ahead and smash that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. Those are two things that cost you nothing but help us out a lot. Also, check out my vlog channel in which I travel the world and I do all kinds of crazy stuff. It's not tech related, at least most of it anyways, but it is entertaining and I promise you won't be disappointed. Link for that is in the description box as well and also go ahead and follow me on Instagram while you're at it. Let's get started. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the stand if you do have it hooked up. It's a flathead screw that you need to remove. Once the screw comes out, we're gonna take the stand off. At this point, we're gonna take the cover off. Just give it a whack like that and it comes off. There's clips that hold it in, so it slides off. Then we're gonna flip the console over and do the same thing on the other side. Like that, and it comes off. We're gonna go ahead, we're gonna remove these Torx T9H security screws. This right here is the SSD storage slot. There's a screw over here that some of you will remember if you've disassembled the PS4. It's the same screw that was used for the hard drives. Uh, it, there's a Phillips screw that holds it in, which is also in our FastTech Pro Toolkit. So we're going to attach that bit to our screwdriver. Remove that screw. It's a lot longer this time around. It's not short like it used to be. So it, it's not exactly the same. <laughs> we're going to remove that bay. And that's the M-2 SSD slot. We're going to remove this sticker that hides a bunch of connectors down here. We're gonna try to do it slowly so it doesn't get bent or damaged. It's like a cover, basically it's kind of like a sticker, but it's like a thick material. It's hiding these connectors in here. We're gonna disconnect these connectors. Leave the cable in there. This one's for the fan. You're gonna pinch the connector from the sides, not from the yellow part. Grab the white part of the connector, wiggle, and pull, like that. I'm gonna remove these four screws. They're also Torx T9H screws that hold the fan in. piece that holds the fan in. At this point, we're gonna remove this piece. It's just a plastic trim piece that clips in. All right, we're gonna put that to the side and then we're gonna lift the fan out. At this point, we're gonna remove this sticker uh, this is what Sony considers to be the warranty sticker in the United States due to an FTC ruling. This is no longer considered a warranty sticker. If you want to bypass this seal without Sony knowing that you did, use a heat gun, heat this seal, or use a hairdryer if you don't have a heat gun. Then you can gently peel it off to 
expose this, the last T9H screw that's in there. All right, so now that I've heated it up for a little bit, I should be able to take this off without avoiding the sticker. I gotta do it really slow. You don't you wanna take your time with this. Great success. So that's how you take off a warranty seal without voiding it and letting Sony know that you did. So your warranty still stays intact. Again, if you're outside the US. And there's the Torx T9H screw right there. We're gonna remove. Now this part's free, I can just pull it off. All right. At this point, we're gonna get the disc drive out. There's a ribbon cable here that we're gonna to have to remove. Push down and it should come out like that. You don't wanna pull it out without pushing down on this, otherwise the cable's gonna be damaged. Now we're gonna lift the disc drive out. And that's the Blu-ray disc drive on the PS5. That's what it looks like. We're gonna remove these two antenna cables. I'm guessing these are for Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. There's tape that holds these cables in. Like that, there's more antenna cables on this side. We're gonna disconnect this ribbon cable here. Disconnect this ribbon cable here at the front. Now we're gonna remove the several Torx T9H screws on the board here. There's a lot of them. retention clip that side is pushed this side is pulled and the cable is gonna come out like that at this point we're gonna flip the console over there's some screws on this side that we need to remove they're all they're also Torx T9H screws all right I'm gonna flip it back. That screw fell out. All right, at this point, we're gonna be able to get this plate free. You might have to use a little bit of force because there's these thermal pads and some thermal paste that uh, attaches it to the motherboard. And that's the motherboard right there. This is what I was talking about right here. That's the heat sink clamp. That's what uh, holds the heat sink onto the board. We're gonna push down on it like this. We're gonna push it down and then pull out the connector like that. Now we're gonna undo these screws that hold the heat sink onto the APU. Put these to the side and we're gonna remove this piece. This whole design is very similar to previous PlayStations. 
We want to be very careful when working in this area. At this point, we're going to lift the motherboard out with, along with the heat sink. All right. This is the power supply right here. I'm going to get to that in a bit. I'm going to put this to the side for now. Right. So that's the heat sink. It's pretty massive. That's the heat sink right there. As you can see, it's really, really massive. The biggest heat sink I've ever seen in a game console. We've got to remove this Phillips screw. So now our motherboard should be free from the heat sink. I'm gonna separate it. I can hear it separate. I don't wanna flex the board too much. There you go. Now it's come apart. It was actually the thermal pad right here. This is a thermal pad that was getting in the way. And that's the motherboard right there. That's the liquid metal application right there. Also on the heat sink, you can see the application. There's one blob on the chip and on the heat sink that seems like it's not, It's it should be more evenly spread. Uh, and again, guys, if you, if you guys do end up doing this at home, do not mess around with this uh, liquid metal application. It's very difficult to put on, very difficult to replace, and you definitely don't wanna get any of it on your motherboard, because if you do, you could short your board. This stuff, unlike regular thermal paste, is conductive. So that means it's gonna tra it could conduct electricity, and that's not good for your board. So do not mess around with this stuff. Leave it as it is. Uh, I'm not going to be replacing this. There's no need. This is a fresh application. It's going to restick fine when I put it back in. So don't be going crazy in the comments saying I didn't replace this. All right. So here we have the bottom end of the case. This piece right here, the LED light and uh, the power button assembly. It comes right off. It's one piece. It'll come off easily. All right, let's look at the power supply here. So, it seems like if the power supply does fail, which these components do fail quite frequently, you would have to take everything out of the system to get to the power supply. Um, and these are definitely a weak point uh, in the system because I know from the past, from earlier PlayStation models and electronics in general, when you pack a power supply like this in, so close to the motherboard and so close to other components that generate heat. And the power supply is also generating heat. That's not a good recipe for uh, cooling. So I believe that these will fail. And when they do, you'd have to take everything apart to get to the power supply. So we're gonna remove the power supply. supply is out there's an antenna cable and there's another antenna at the front the power supply model is an ADP 400 DR for the PS5 first gen we're gonna remove this antenna by pushing down on this plastic piece right here and then we're just gonna lift the antenna out All right, our power supply is out at this point. Before we put the power supply back in, I'm gonna make sure that the front IO board is lined up because this goes in first, okay? You wanna make sure that this is all nice and seated. Then we're gonna put the power supply in. And I'm gonna make sure the cables at the front, don't get in the way. This one here. 
And now the power supply sits on top of the trim of the IO panel here. So this goes on top of that. And then we're gonna put the heat sink back in. Check the cables at the front. Now we're gonna put the main board back in. Check the cables at the front to make sure they don't get in the way. And now we're gonna reinstall the heat sink clamp. This side is gonna go in this hole and this side is gonna go in that hole. Then we're gonna put the heat sink clamp back on. The side with the writing, that's gonna be facing up. Very, very careful. We're gonna use our Phillips screwdriver here. Size zero or size one should work in our Fastech Pro tool kit. And we're gonna tighten these screws diagonally. You don't wanna tighten one and then do the other. You wanna do it one at a time, like I'm doing switch back and forth so that you don't tighten one too much. All right, make sure, that, make sure these are nice and tight, but not too tight. All right, we're gonna put this cable back in. There's this clip that we have to push down. You don't wanna do this without pushing down the clip. You push down this clip, like I'm doing it right now, and you push the cable all the way into the solid, till the solid blue line's invisible. All right, now the cable's in. We're gonna install this cable for the power button at the front, all the way up to the solid blue line here as well. Then we're gonna put the back plate back on. And then we're gonna put all of the various screws that hold the heat sink back plate in place. these cables through the tape. cable is gonna go here all right on this hole here so how you connect them is you just kind of line it up on top push it down and the black connector goes here line it up on top of the circle and then push it down you're gonna feel it and hear it click and that's when you know it's in there's a tall black Torx T9 screw that goes in here. And tighten that. 
And then we're gonna connect these connectors on the side here. This is a ribbon cable that goes in here. Again, you're gonna push it in all the way till the blue line. And on this side, these antenna cables, the white one is this one here. Line it up, push it down like that. Don't use too much force. If you don't get it right the first time, readjust. This is how the cable connectors should look. Guys, okay, pay attention to this part. Then we're gonna reconnect this ribbon cable here. We're gonna push this clip down like that. And we're gonna reinstall this cable. This is for the disk drive. All right. Now finally, we're gonna install the SSD screw. We're gonna put our disk drive back on. Like that. These holes here should line up at the front. Right here, this should line up. We're gonna reconnect the cable by pu pushing down on the silver part of the connector, like that. Now that we got the cable in, I'm gonna install this part of the frame back on. There's clips on the sides that you're gonna hear click. This screw here goes here. And at this point, we're gonna reconnect the power cable for the disk drive. I'm gonna install the cover for the SSD and we're gonna put this black screw with a the, the PlayStation symbols. We're gonna tighten that screw. Then we're gonna reinstall the fan. Like that. With a side that has the wire being closest to the connector on the board. Then we're gonna reinstall the mesh on top of the fan. And there's a side here there's a, that has space for the cable. This is the side that goes on the cable here. Like that, with the cable passing through it so it doesn't get pinched. And the screws go in something like this. There's a tall one that goes in here. There's another longer screw that goes in here. There's another long one that goes in here. And the short screw goes in here. All right, now we're gonna start putting in the screws for the, for the mid frame. One in here. One in here. have only two screws left. We're gonna flip this thing over. One of them goes in here and one of them goes in here. We're gonna flip it back around. We're gonna put this piece on here. It's got clips in it. Line it up, push it down. So you hear it click. Now we're gonna put on Sony's so-called warranty sticker back on. There you go. And I run this cable in through here. 
And now we can stick this piece back on. That covers these cables here. Like that. Now we're gonna attach the cover back on from the disc side. We're gonna line it up, push it down and then whack it from the side. But you wanna be pushing it down while you do this, otherwise it's not gonna work. And now it looks like it looks like it is in place. Same with the other side, we're gonna flip it over. It goes in from this side and then we're gonna push it down, whack it in place. And now our PS5 is reassembled and ready to play again. Now I'm gonna be turning it on to make sure everything works. All right, great. So we got the blue light, which means the console is powering on. So we were successful in disassembling and reassembling this PS5. Another video from Fast Tech. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Like the video if you like it. And uh, stay tuned for more PS5 and Xbox Series X and Series S content. And I'll catch you in the next one.